So Pokemon Shuffle still sucks, but that's not what this video is about. Um, this is going to be my Sun Moon, a lot of stuff has been revealed thought dump so that I can get it all out of the way and not talk about it in other videos, basically. Obviously, if you are opposed to such things, you should have not clicked this video in the first place, but if you did, now is your chance to get out. So, um, I'm going to start out with some gorilla-style webcam action here, just to show off random things in the demo. Um, anybody who has played the demo probably knows that there's really not that much content in it, but, um, yes, camera, are, are you having fun? Okay. Um... There are a few funky things worth pointing out, and um, I'll just kind of ramble a bit, probably. So, um, I like how it saves as soon as you open it. That's pretty good. So, uh, first thing to point out that is super important is the fact that you can twirl. I don't know what purpose this has. Um, it seems to be annoying when trying to encounter Pokemon, though. Um, next thing worth pointing out, uh, your character walks like a toy soldier. I don't know what this walk animation is, but it's not good. The running is a bit better. Um, by far the best thing, though, is, uh, sitting on top of this gigantic mount on the Tauros and just ramming into people with no consequences. It's pretty good. So, um... I don't, I don't know. I, I don't really know where I'm going with any of this. But, uh... This guy... Yeah, he gives you, like, items. It, it, you have to play this game, like, the demo every few days, because there's always, like, some person who will give you crap. Um... Before I go and do anything interesting, I'd like to show off uh, my favorite things in this demo, because they're pretty good. Um... Down this way, we have the, uh the line of slowpoke with about, like, 50 feet in between each of them that you just can't walk through. It, it, I, I, like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty bad. Um, the other things, I'm trying to think what... I don't remember in what location they were, so I probably won't bother. There was a person who is, like manning this cafe, and she says that, like, the real person is off on an adventure collecting the freshest ingredients, so in my mind it's Marcel toying. Um, there was a vending machine that charges a million polka dollars, which is pretty good. And, um, let me go back, and I need to show this again, just to really highlight the shittiness of it, so... Um, in this game, you don't just go through doors. You have to always press A. And when you open something, you just kind of extend your arm in a really shitty animation, and then the game fades to black for about five seconds. Okay, m maybe more like two. But, they're, like, they couldn't be arsed to make a door opening animation there, so they had to fade to black. And, like, I don't even understand why they had to section this off. Like, is it too hard to program grass and wild encounters into the city? I don't get it. But anyway, going into a battle here um, with the over-the-top entrance animation here. I'd like to point out that um, I actually did a soft reset towards the end of the demo because I was trying to avoid this Greninja gaining any unnecessary experience and I couldn't actually lose the battle against the totem even when I tried. So I reset, and then I found out that this thing levels to 37 no matter what you do. But anyway, um, in battle, we have the bottom screen, which is really strangely laid out. There's, like, a whole bunch of real estate in the middle that I feel could have been better used, and it's just not. Like, if you're playing this game casually and not really paying attention to what you're doing, which is what I usually do when I'm training stuff... I liked having the fight button here, because I would usually put my, like, number one preferred move kind of up in the corner. I can no longer do that. I have to use my right thumb, which is okay, but you have to use your left thumb to move, so it, like, I don't know if you can play this one-handed anymore. Hopefully they put the L equals A option back in. But anyway, um, let me go ahead and use double team just to, uh, 
illustrate something here. I can stare at a screen because I don't feel like pointing the camera any differently. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, a new addition here is this little icon that you can poke that actually shows you what your stat changes are, which is cool. Um, I definitely do like that. It also, um, conveniently, I didn't plan this, uh, the Picky Pack used Supersonic, so I have, uh, Confusion status, so it shows what statuses you have. Um, I've had Rock Ruffs use, what is it, uh, what the hell is that thing called? Odor Sleuth. And there, you have, like, the status of Identified or something, and it shows that on there. And then when you poke this thing, it shows you what your ability does, in case you forgot. So, here's a good tie-in to Ash Greninja. Um, I can't show it off because you have to uh, defeat a Pokemon for it to change, which means you have to be in a trainer battle. And I don't think you can do trainer battles after the first few, and I've already done all of them. I'll go check, but... Uh, Anyway, Ash Greninja is one of those things that everybody kind of assumed was going to be shit. And, um, apparently it's actually pretty decent. It has a pretty good stat boost. It's just you have to not have Protean to get it. So, I don't know. But, um, that's pretty much all I wanted to show in the actual battle. Um, I guess I'll defeat this thing just for the sake of showing, like, a battle animation. Will I get confusion damage? No, surprisingly not. I like how they changed Water Shuriken to a special move. I feel like it kind of makes more sense that way. <clears throat> Alright, so... Um, other things I would like to show here. Um, is it all going to be on the bottom screen? Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, some of it is, at least. Uh, I'll start with the bag. I'm holding this DS in a very stupid way. So in the bag, uh, we have the return of the uh, free space pouch. Oh wait, no, never mind. This is the this is the Z crystal pouch. Thank God they gave one for this because there's so many stupid situational items you're going to be collecting. Because in addition to just the usual schlock that you'll collect throughout your game, including like the 17 RCS plates and all that crap. Um, there is also the 48 Mega Stones, which apparently are going to all be post-game only, so I guess you won't really be encountering them unless you specifically buy them, but whatever. Um, but then you have two of each of the different, like, type crystals. Apparently there's a small one and a big one. I'm not really sure what the difference is. It's weird. And then you have the other ones for, like, the Snorlax move, the Pikachu move, that kind of crap. But yeah, there's a free space pouch, which is cool. This was in Gen 5, and then they got rid of it because Game Freak likes getting rid of things. Um, so this will help you sort out some of that unnecessary crap. And I guess that's pretty much all I have in here. Um, not that I can show it, but uh, HMs are gone. They've all been turned into TMs, and you do those like field moves like the Tauros thing in replacement of them, which is always good. Uh, now on the Pokemon menu, I like how my reflection keeps sneaking in there. But, uh, anyway, a couple different things here. Um, let me just pull this up, and... You know what, let's just freaking make it both screens. It'll be easier that way. Um, no, I don't want to be closing that. Come on now. Okay, so we have the, uh, markings that have always been here, but, uh, now you can make it blue, or you can make it pink. So there are actual differences there. Um, these are just your moves, that's fine. I don't think there's anything terribly interesting on the bottom screen, really. Uh, top screen, though, if I frickin' click this back in again. Um, no, no game, I didn't want to close the menu. I'm sorry, I, I'm having a really bad time doing this. Uh, up here you've got the... Can we... Can we get a better focus on that, possibly? Maybe not? Okay. Um, it basically, it's it's your stats, obviously, and it has... A, I don't know what this effect is. 
Uh, it's got like the shape showing like how strong they all are, but uh, what the game doesn't tell you is you can press Y and it will actually show you EVs. Um, the Greninja you get in the demo starts with a bunch of EVs already on it and uh, speed down there is sparkling because it's maxed out. So it doesn't give you a numerical value, it's basically like super training, but it's good to have, that's kind of cool. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the demo worth actually showing off. There's just a few random places you can go to, none of them are all that interesting. Um, there's that one route, I can go back there again, but uh, I'll see if there's like a trainer that I can rebattle. I'm guessing there probably isn't. God, just running over everything with this Tauros is the stupidest thing. Can I rebattle you? No. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it. There's a Pokemon catching uh, area over here. You get a nugget for catching three things. Apparently you can find Pikachu there. I never did. It took me forever just to find a rock rough in the first place, and those things are apparently not even that rare. But that's all I can really say about the demo. Um, I mainly am showing this as a way to uh, kind of cover stuff that isn't just random Pokemon, because that's what I'm going to be doing as soon as I'm done with this, um, going through the entire list and giving my thoughts on them. I'm looking forward to the game. Um, I don't think it's going to be groundbreaking, but it is definitely trying to change some things up, and um, hopefully most of the changes will be for the better. I like that they've, they're they getting rid of HMs. Um, I don't like all the new items they're adding. The Z-moves seem kind of useless. Like, that, the thing is, they're not useless, though. They're extremely broken, and there doesn't really need to be anything extremely broken because the game is already easy as it is, so that's kind of my main complaint. Um, so, I don't know. Like, it, it's just the replacement for Mega Evolution, even though Mega Evolution still exists. It's like... Oh, hello, Pikachu. I've, I've seen him in this grass. I've never seen him in the catching area, though. But, yeah, I'll have to... I'll talk more about that, I guess, once the game comes out, because right now, who knows what it's going to be like. I used the Gigavolt Hav Havoc against Golbat earlier in the demo, and it died in one hit, but it probably would have died in one hit just from a regular Thunderbolt, so I'm not, like, surprised by this. Um, anything else really worth talking about? Um, customization's back, which is good. Um, my trainer looks like a bit of a I don't know what. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what to call him. Because he's wearing the riding right gear and it's like really stupid looking. But um I like that they brought that back. They seem to have moved all of the uh online interactions, like the PSS type stuff, kinda like to its own separate island, which means you might have to travel there to actually do like battling and trading and stuff, which Seems like a step back, but I'm not sure how they're handling that exactly. You might not have to go there. And, um... The replacement for Pokemon and me also seems like you can cure, um... status conditions with it, which is also a bit broken, because that means you don't have to stock up on, like, antidote, paralysis heal type stuff. So, I mean, it's definitely making the games easier when they didn't need the difficulty drop, but I'm not going to be the kind of person to really complain about that. Like, I don't care if they're easy. If you want to make it harder on yourself, you can always do that by just not using the features or putting in self-imposed challenges and crap. But, uh... If I think of anything else, I'll probably mention it later. But that's about all I can say about the demo. And... I uh, will go ahead and move into the me talking at length about sprites section of this, so that'll be fun.
All right, so like I said, this is basically going to be me going through the list of all the new Pokemon, and actually um, probably a lot of the old Pokemon too, um, and just going over what I think about them. Um, I'll go over what I think about the new batch as a whole once I reach it, but I'm going to be starting with the uh, beginning of the decks here. So um, <clears throat> you'll want to excuse the pixels. Um, I'm doing this very low tech. Basically, I'm just going to be opening up the sprites one by one and kind of scrolling through them. So that's why the logo that you're looking at right now is really low quality because it's matching the size of that. So um, it, I, I'm not going to do any freaking editing for this. I'm too lazy. So um, basically, uh, for those who may not be aware, I'm sure you probably know this if you're watching this video, but um, the demo has been data mined. And um, from what I understand, they did a decent job of scrubbing some of the information out of it, but they kept a lot of stuff that they shouldn't have. Um, they were saying at first that only the shinies remained of stuff, and you couldn't actually find the like regular models, but then that turned out to not be true. So, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Um, what they found is a large collection of sprites, which are going to be basically the Pokedex preview images. Um, and it is not like 100% confirmed, because obviously we don't have the full game and nobody from Game Freak is going to step up and say anything. But uh, it is very heavily implied that this is going to be the full um, Alolan regional decks. So... I'm just going to kind of pull it up here, and we'll go through it, um, skipping through anything that is not interesting, such as Caterpie. Um, every one of these is going to have a shiny. Um, gender differences and stuff are in here. And uh, then we get to stuff like this, and these I am going to talk about um, because they're new. So Alolan, Rattata, and Raticate. Um not the most interesting ones to start off with. Uh, they are normal dark, and they are basically like 1940s mobsters, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not really sure what they're trying to be, but that's what they seem like to me. Can't say I'm terribly interested in them. They exist. I'm not going to use them. I, I, I'm not going to use any Alolan form that I'm planning, at least. I might, like, cave in and use one of them, but there's really not that many that interest me overall. Um, I'll complain about the Alolan forms as a whole when I'm at the end of this list. Uh, here's a couple blank spots. Um, these are here because of totems. Uh, if you download the zip of all the different sprites, um, you'll notice that there's just a few blank spots. There's one at the very beginning before Caterpie. There's one after the Radicates, and then there's a bunch in like the gen 7 stuff and basically what we're thinking is that those are the spots for the totem pokemon that you'll battle in the island challenges because uh we already know that the Raticate is getting one and um some of the spots after the other ones also make sense for that so unfortunately they're not like missing pokemon that were removed from the demo or anything they're just weird alternate things that aren't in here so anyway Let's go ahead. We've got 70,000 different forms of Pikachu in this. Um, we've got the female one, the male one, and then we have the ones with hats. Um, there's six different hats. Uh, there's the Kanto and Johto season one, the Hoenn season, Sin Sinnoh season, Unova season, Kalos season, and Alolan season. Um, I don't have a strong opinion on these. They're Pikachu with a hat. People have been making Team Fortress 2 jokes about them, which are pretty accurate. Um, I'm guessing these are going to be event only, which reminds me way too much of Shuffle, because Shuffle is doing stupid shit like um, winking Pikachu costumed Sableye stuff, and it's just, it, it's filler. It doesn't need to exist. Um, now, if these things have the battle bond that Greninja has, that actually makes Pikachu powerful, then that would be kind of cool. But Pikachu already has an evolution that could be used instead, 
So it's like I don't I don't know why they always give Raichu the uh they just kind of screw it over in most cases and don't give it any attention. But um that said, we have this. This one is kind of interesting. Um it's part psychic and it apparently gained this ability by eating too many round and fluffy soft pancakes, according to the uh, website or whatever it is. Um, it's pretty stupid. Um, but the Raichu itself is kind of cool. It People say that it's like a reference to uh, Puka, the surfing Pikachu from the first season of the anime. It probably isn't, but it does have the same eyes, and it's a surfer, so it's kind of cool. Um... So then we have uh, Snow Shrew here. Its head is an igloo. And it's, uh, is it ground ice? Or is it just ice? Let me actually look that up. I've got the website open right here for any time I need to check on that. Oh, it's ice steel. I knew its evolution was. I didn't realize Sand Shrew was. What about this looks steel? I don't know. But it's ice steel, apparently. And then we have... Uh, Cold Steel the Hedgehog. If you don't if you don't call it that, then you're doing it wrong. That is what this thing is. It's it's Cold Steel the Hedgehog. Um, overall, I don't mind these. I like ice types in general. I am not sure why the Sandshrew family had to become ice to adapt to a tropical climate. That doesn't really make much sense, but I'll take them, I guess. Um. Once again, probably not going to use them, but if I was going to use one, they'd be kind of up on, like, high up on the list, because uh, I don't like regular Sand Slash, but I like this thing. And uh, Ice Steel is a cool type, even if it is quadruple weak to both fighting and fire, which isn't doing it any favors. Now, um, we've got another Ice type form here, Vulpix, and uh, Nine Tails, which is Ice Fairy for some reason. Fairy is one of those types that's just very loosely defined. Like, it doesn't really have any qualities that you can look at something and say that's a fairy. Because some stuff that should be isn't, and some stuff that shouldn't be is, as far as I'm concerned. But whatever. Not here to complain about that. Um, this one's also kind of cool. Um, I've never been the hugest Ninetales fan. Though I don't hate it by any means, I did use one once. Um, it's just not my favorite. But uh, the new form is pretty looking, and Ice Fairy is a cool type, I guess. I'd... I'm not sure if that does it any favors, because um, Ice has, like, no resistances. Fairy is not resistant to fire, right? So it still is weak to fire. It loses the fighting weakness. It's four times weak to steel, so yeah, I don't know. But uh, does this thing have a special ability on it? The snow cloak. Oh, and uh, one other thing to mention about this: um, since regular Vulpix evolves through a Firestone, and uh, this thing would make no sense to do that, um, the popular accept accepted theory for this is that there's going to be an Ice Stone. Um, Data has been ripped from the game to show that new items exist, but uh, most of the information on them was actually scrubbed, so we just know that there's slots for them. And um, for whatever... I'm not sure how they determined this, but they're saying that there is a new Evolution Stone, so it's probably the Ice Stone. Um, which means that if they ever wanted to go back and retcon Evolutions, uh, they could do that for all of them now, except for maybe Sylveon. That one could use, like, Shiny Stone, I guess. They won't do that, but they could. So anyway, let's progress through here a bit. Uh, Zubat's about to become a lot more annoying because apparently Leech Life has gotten a power boost. Again, this hasn't been proven, but uh, it's thought that that's the case at least because it uh, is a TM that replaced Dig for some reason. This Parasect Sprite is the best thing. So here's Diglett with hair. That's pretty much all I can say about it. It's Diglett with a very small amount of hair. It evolves into Doug Trio with substantially more hair. Um, so this is a new one from the demo. Um, they haven't officially revealed this anywhere yet, although you can see this one in the demo from like a rare thing that can occur apparently. Um, this thing's pretty hilarious, I won't lie. I don't know what to think of it exactly, 
because it's a little bit stupid, but it's also kind of funny. Um, and I don't know what type it is, because it's probably not just pure ground, because I don't think any of the other Alolan forms kept their same type. Um, people seem to think it might be groundwater, because it's supposed to be, like, uh, surfer dudes, which would make sense if you find it on the beach. I kind of hope it isn't, because there's already, like, 70 groundwater types. But, um, I don't know, I guess we'll see what that thing is. Uh, here is Prissy Dark Type Meowth. Is it pure dark, or is it dark normal? Let me check. Uh, it is pure dark, okay. Uh, I don't like this one. I think it's kind of dumb looking. I'm not even the hugest fan of the original Meowth anyway. Um, but I like the original more than this one. And then we have, uh, this thing, which is just normal from Garfield. Um, that is the greatest face. Uh, this one has not been officially shown off either, so it's probably pure dark, just like the, the Meowth was. Um, I'm not expecting great things from this. Like, it's, I didn't like Persian, and... I didn't like the new Meowth, and I don't like this about as much as the the other two. It's really funny looking, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, let's see what we got next. There were rumors that there was going to be a fighting type Alakazam, and people had art for it with it holding nunchucks. It didn't happen. There's no there's no new Alakazam. There's also, like, three Machamps in the demo for some reason. I don't know why they're so common in that. It's kind of weird. So anyway, here's our next one. Um, Geodude with angry eyebrows and hair. I guess that's what that is. It evolves into Graveler with angry eyebrows and, like, a couple lumps of cheese stuck inside it. Or it's just the Jiggy Boulder from Banjo-Tooie. Uh, which then evolves into like, glorious leader of Russia, Golem. I have no clue what this thing is supposed to be. Like, what is this? It has a mustache and a beard, and it just kind of has, like, a pile on top of it, which all I can see is, like, shoulder pads and a hat. Like, is this thing supposed to be, like, M. Bison or something? Like, he doesn't have a beard, I don't think. I don't remember, actually. I don't think it does. But, like, I, that's sort of... I, for some reason, I get a Russian vibe from this thing. It's really odd, and um, I don't know what type it is, but seeing as how they add dark to half of the other Alolan forms, I wouldn't be surprised if it was rock dark. Um, I kind of hope it isn't, but that's what I'm guessing. Overall, not terribly impressed with these three. Um, these, the Persian and the Doug Trio are actually the only ones that have not been shown off in pre-release, and they kind of saved the worst for last, I feel. So. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this thing. So we've got uh, <clears throat> regular Grimer, shiny Grimer, Alolan Grimer, Alolan shiny Grimer. Notice the uh, reversal there, kind of funky. And it also uh, dipped its face into nacho cheese for whatever reason and gained teeth. Um, this thing is also part dark. I could not possibly explain why. It doesn't look like it's dark. It just is. And, um, it evolves into rainbow-colored muck, which I think is kind of cool looking. But, um, again, I'm not really sure why it's part dark. I think it's supposed to be like a melted popsicle. But, uh, that, again, shouldn't be dark. So, I don't know, whatever. I'll stop harping on that, but yeah, again, not a huge fan of these. They're okay, but they're not great. I like how some of these shinies have, like, different poses from the regular ones. That's really weird. I don't know why they did that. So, this thing, um, everybody seems to love. I think it's okay. It's, uh, probably one of the better Alolan forms. I don't hate it. But um, I don't think it's as great as everybody says it is. Um, it's Grass Dragon. Nothing about this really screams dragon. And that's what everybody loves about it, because it's completely nonsensical. But uh, that's what it is, so whatever. 
If I was going to use an Alolan form, I think this would be my second choice. The first choice is still the coming up on the list. <clears throat> it's kind of cool, but there's plenty of other grass types I want to use. And then we have this thing, which is the um, Ghost Fire type. It is Ghost Fire, right? I'm not making that up. Yeah, it's Ghost Fire, or Fire Ghost, whatever. Um, I'm trying to make sure none of these things had, like, interesting abilities. Uh, this one has Cursed Body, which is kind of cool. But, um, but, yeah, this thing, it goes from being pure ground to being Fire Ghost, which is a bit of a leap. But, um, it's cool. I like it. Once again, I'm probably not going to use it because I want to stick to Gen 7 stuff only, but, um, it would be my number one pick if I was going to use something because I've never used a Marowak anyway, and this one gives it a bit of extra oomph, and it's just kind of cool. Um, and I think that's actually the last one. Let me keep going through these. Get to view all of these shinies and whatnot. Yeah, why do these have... Oh, that's a gender difference, so that that's why that's there. But yeah, I don't get why some of the shinies have different poses. Porygon's apparently in the original decks, which is always cool. I like Porygon. And, um, yeah, that'll be the end of the Gen 1 Pokemon. So, there were quite a few of them. Um, you can't see the number right now, but... Uh, on the list of sprites, um, everything's just, n like, numerical, and this is number 268. So, quite a lot of love for Gen 1, and that's what a lot of people are kind of upset about, because this is the 20th anniversary of the series, and they seem to be celebrating it by pandering to Gen 1ers more than anything else. Um, I'm fine with them making new forms for Gen 1 stuff, but it shouldn't be exclusively for those. They should have made some for other stuff, too. Um, even if it was only, like, the token mascots here and there, like a Lucario or a Togepi or something. Um, like, at least toss a bone, but they didn't. It's only Gen 1, and there's 18 total, which is not a huge number either. I feel like they could have done so much more with this. So that's kind of what I'm upset about. Um... Eh, nothing can be done about it. So I'm just going to go through the rest of these so you can see what is available. Um, there's some decent Pokemon here and there. Um, again, I'm not planning on using any older ones, so I can't say, like, ooh, they brought Smeargle, that's cool. Um, but whatever, they're fine. Um, you'll notice that Gen 1 had by far the most stuff in it, because here's the end of Gen 2, and we're up to 344. Um, Gen 3, I think, is even fewer. And I think this one actually has the uh, greatest sin of all... Wait, is this thing, like... Is it, like, riding on the giant rupee? That's weird. Um, wait, we have Sableye, but no Mawile? Huh, okay. But, um... You may notice, as I'm going through this, uh, I mean, you may not, depending on your knowledge of the order of the Pokedex, so I'll keep going until I get to the end, and then I'll point it out. Yeah, i got to make room for Relicant. That one's important. Is that the end here? No, this is. Okay. So, uh, there was no Lunatone or Solrock in there. This is Pokemon Sun and Moon. Those are the Sun and Moon Pokemon. They did not include them. They could have given them a new Mega, or at least a Z-Move, or anything, and they chose to not do anything, and I find that really stupid. Now, um, this is a point where I can point out that uh, this is only the regional decks, and there could be stuff hidden in the post-game that the data miners haven't found, because Gen 4 had certain things that weren't in the regional decks, like there were a bunch of new evolutions, some of the legendaries, stuff like that. Um, and that's kind of a thing that people are aware of, but most people ex don't really think it's very likely, um, because Gen 5 and 6 actually went out of their way to include the mythicals in the regional decks, um, when they very easily could have not been. So, it's 
not expected that that'll happen, but it'll be a nice surprise if it does, because um, there are no new Megas introduced. Like Gen Six focused on this is like this great new mechanic. Everybody, you have to you have to love this. It's going to be cool, and uh, they gave it to forty eight different Pokemon, and then they just stopped. Like, can you at least give it to the other starters, if nothing else? Why does Charizard get two? but anything from Gen 2, 4, 5, or 6 gets nothing. It just seems kind of unfair. So, anyway, enough rambling. Here's Gen 4. Not very many from this. Surprising number of fossil Pokemon. Um, I didn't want to talk about the new stuff yet, but I will say that there are no new fossils in the Gen 7 batch. And, um, wait, why am I not able to... There we go. Um, but yeah, there's no new fossils in the Gen 7 batch, and some people are saying this makes sense because Hawaii is a volcanic island. It's made out of hardened lava, and it would make sense for there not to be lava, or for there to be fossils there. I'm like, okay, that actually makes sense. I can buy that. Uh, so far, we've had... Well, let's see. We have we have the Gen 4s. I don't think Lilip and Cradley were in here. No, they weren't. Gen 2 doesn't have fossils, and Gen 1 we had um, Aerodactyl, but we didn't have Omanite or Kabuto. I think there's more fossils later on. I'll mention it when we get there. But yeah, I'm not sure why they're bringing those back then. Um, certainly they're not just going to be in the wild, right? Because that'll be kind of weird. But uh, anyway, we got Shellos, which is fine. It doesn't get enough love. Drifloon's cool. And then here we have stuff related to other crap. Behold the uh, majestic differences of shiny Garchomp. Of course, Lucario's in there. Why wouldn't it be? It wasn't an Aura, surprisingly. And here's some more evolutions. So uh, That'll be the end of Gen 4. Nothing too exciting there. Here's 5. I think this one also has, like, nothing in it. That's actually a really cool shiny. Uh, do we have... Yeah, we have Gen 5 fossils, so... Archaeops, I don't know what that pose is, but you need to not do that. And uh, here's what I love. So this is the uh, this is the game where they're pandering to Gen 1ers. Like, here, have all of your original 150 stuff. We're going to give them new forms, so they'll be new but different at the same time. It'll be great. And then at the same time, let's introduce not one, but two of the Pokemon from Gen 5 that people love to complain about. Now, I love Garbodor and Vanillux. I think they're kind of dumb to the point of being great. Like, I used both of them. I like weird inanimate object Pokemon. I think that they're interesting. But uh, that seems to be a minority opinion, so I don't know why they included them. It's kind of weird. Also, they brought back uh, Love Discs, not Evolution. Also, Braviary has really tiny wings. But, uh, so that's it for Gen 5, and let's, uh, let's go into Gen 6 now. You'll blink and you'll miss it. So we've got 1, 2, this one doesn't count, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Pokemon if you include the Legendary. Good. Now, Gen 6 didn't have that much stuff to pick from, but, uh, that's still pretty low. So, anyway, now we get into Zygarde, which is weird. Um, I still don't fully understand how this thing works. Apparently, um, there's the cell form and the core form, which don't actually count as Pokemon. They're just kind of like things that you collect. And um, as you collect them, they eventually become 10% form, which is uh, Zydoge, as I call it, and then the 50, which is the one from X and Y. Um, and when you do this, it will have its, uh, new hidden ability, which is, I forget what it's called. I could look it up, but I'm too lazy. Um, basically its hidden ability makes it so that when it gets to low HP, it, uh, transforms into the complete form, which is what I like to call the, uh, it was something that Professor Farnsworth said once. 
basically saying that he was going to create a new monster with freeway on ramps for arms and a heart as black as coal. Uh, that's what I call this thing because it that's just what it is. Um, I don't really get why they're giving all this extra attention to Zygarde in Gen 7. It's kind of odd because they've not done that with other legendaries. Like the closest they've ever come is uh, Mewtwo's Mega Evolutions in X and Y, and they didn't really bring that much attention to them. So, I don't know. It's, uh, as we'll be seeing later, there's not really a third member of the, uh, what's usually the legendary trio in Sun and Moon. So, I like to think of it as, uh, Zygarde being the Earth representative, because that's pretty much what it is. So you've got Sun, Moon, and Earth. So it's kind of like the part of the trio of both games, which leads me to believe that uh, Gen 6 and 7 were not really intended to be separate generations at some point, and then they split it probably for like... I think I think Gen 6 was kind of rushed. That's my theory as to what happened. But... Uh, Anyway, those are those things. You'll notice that there's a few blank spots in between. I don't know why that is. Unless it's for the core and the cell forms, but I don't think those show up in the Pokedex, so I don't know. So, anyway. Now we are getting into the new stuff from Gen 7. Um, there are... We think... 802 Pokemon total which means um, 81 new things, which is a little bit more than X and Y, but not that much more. Um, I think I made a random prediction in uh, my Platinum video that guessed a number similar to that, but not exactly. So, um, the number is a little bit underwhelming, and um, I think most of the individual designs make up for that, because most of them are pretty good. There's going to be some weird stuff at the end, though, and so we'll be... We'll be getting to that later. Now, um, so we're going to go through these in order, obviously. Uh, we've got the starters. Rowlet, which evolves into... Let me freaking click on the window properly. Uh, Dartrix, which evolves into this currently unnamed thing that people are calling Robin Root. I don't know if that name came from anything or if it was just made up. Um... This one seems to be the most popular of the three starters, which is kind of cool. It usually doesn't go to the grass type that often. Um, all three of the starters kind of win against people's expectations because they had this circus theme going on, and then they kind of abandoned it. Um, this one is just kind of like a hooded archer, and it's pretty cool. I do like it. Um, it seems to be keeping the grass flying type throughout the whole line, which makes sense. I don't really know what else it would become. So, uh... Oh, and this thing has a... It's signature move. I forget the name of it, but it, uh... I think makes it so the next move will always critical. Which is kind of interesting, I guess. Uh, so we have the fire starter, Litten, which a lot of people thought was going to become part poison because it had, like, the chemical symbol for... Was it Mercury on it? I, it's some kind of symbol on its head, I don't forget. Um, but you have Litten, which becomes Toracat, which becomes yet another bipedal, uh, hulking monstrosity type thing. Um, it is not known what type this thing is yet. Everybody is assuming Dark, mainly because they're terrified that it's going to be fighting again. Um, I have a few things to say about this one. Uh, a lot of people seem to be really angry at the fact that Game Freak is unable to make a uh, quadrupedal f uh, final form of a Firestarter because the closest they've ever come with that is uh, Typhlosion and, I guess, Infernape can like run on all fours if they want to. This one probably can too, but they're usually seen as standing on their hind legs. I don't see that as a problem necessarily, though I also don't know why it couldn't have stayed like just a regular tiger type thing. Like this is more creative than a tiger, like just a regular tiger on all fours, but uh, 
it's also it's a wrestler and they've done wrestlers with fire starters before so it's not that creative i don't hate it though um and this thing uh the name the name floating around for this one is belty gray and it's a uh, signature move is throat chop which uh makes it so the opponent can't use any sound moves. Sure, it would be nice if sound was an actual type, but it's not. Um, and Throat Chop just makes me think of that scene from the uh, Clones of Bruce Lee where one of the clones, like, karate chops this prostitute in the throat. It's pretty good. But, um... And here's the shiny one. But, yeah, like I said, I don't hate it. It is my least favorite of the three, but um, I'm still going to use it. I actually want to use all three starters on my team this time around um, because last t last gen... I basically went into it saying I'm going to use Chespin on the first game, and then when the second game comes out, uh, like Z version or whatever it's going to be, I'll use the other two. And they never made a third version, so I never got to use Delphox at all. And when I used Greninja, it was only for like the um, Battle Maze on, not really in like a playthrough. So anyway, last one we have Poplio. I still don't know what that name is supposed to mean. Evolves into, however you pronounce this thing, Brion, Brione. I don't know what it is supposed to mean either, so I have no clue. I'm going to call it Brion. And um, Final Evolution, which people call Entermade. I still don't know where these names are coming from. Um, only complaint I'm seeing towards this one is that it's too feminine. And I don't know why that's necessarily a bad thing. It does conflict with the starters always having a uh, 7 to 1 male to female gender ratio. But they kind of did it with uh, breaks in and Chikorita and stuff anyway. So it's not really a, anything new. Um, and if it's just a thing about starters shouldn't go one way or the other, then hello, this thing. This can be a female, so sure, this thing can be a male, why, why not? Um, but yeah, this one's uh, kind of like in the middle. Some people like it, some people hate it. I think it's decent. Um, the popular theory seems to be it's going to be part fairy. Completely unproven, but that's kind of what I'm hoping for. And um, its uh, signature move is some combination of reflect and light screen, which is kind of neat. So those are the starters. Like I said, I'm planning on using all three. Um, I have nicknames planned out for them too. Uh, this one, even though its actual appearance does not lend itself towards this whatsoever, I'm going to be naming Felana after my D&D character because she is a druid and it's a grass type. Um, they both are archers, kind of. And um, I think I had a third reason. I forget what it is now. Um, so I'll have to reset to get a female one of these. Uh, this one I'm going to call El Grapadora, um, which is Spanish for the stapler, because uh, that was the name of a wrestler from Angry Beavers. And it's also funny because the stapler is like a thing with uh, Rob Schneider is the stapler. So I don't know. It's just it's irrelevant, but I, I enjoy it. Uh, this one I haven't decided on. It's either going to be Vivian um, after the character from Paper Mario. Uh, which means I will get a male one, even though it is feminine looking, and name it Vivian for that reason. Um, or it might be uh, Lena, or Lena, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, which was a character from... Um, what the hell, why can't I think of the name of it? Uh, Fablehaven. Or possibly uh, Umbriel after the mermaid from Futurama. I haven't decided on that one yet. So anyway, moving on from the starters, we have Picky Peck. It is a woodpecker and not much else. It evolves into... I, I should probably not be skipping past the Shinies, but I usually don't care about them. Like, this one's barely different anyway. Evolves into uh, this. It's, it's a middle-stage bird. I have not really looked at it for longer than five seconds. I have no strong opinion one way or the other which evolves into a really pissed-off toucan. Um, there have been more than a few questions about this, like, why is a woodpecker becoming a toucan? I don't really care. Like, we've had a wing... We've had a, a seagull become a pelican before. 
if we're purely looking at birds, like obviously the go-to example is Remoraid into Octillery, but whatever. It, 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 it's a bird with a long beak that becomes a different bird with a long beak, so why not? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to make its way into my team. Uh, I do kind of like it, but there's also a lot of other flying types I like, including the Grass Starter, so it probably won't have room. Uh, so we have Trump Rat. Everybody calls it Trump Rat. I mean, it's Young Goose, but it's totally Trump Rat, um, which evolves into bigger Trump Rat, also known as uh, Gum Shoes. I don't know why it becomes a detective, but it just kind of does, and it's funny looking. Um, don't plan on using this one either, because it's not terribly interesting, but uh, I think it has a cool ability. What is it again? Uh, stakeout does something. What is it? Deals twice the normal damage if the opponent just switched into battle. Okay, so it's kind of like Pursuit, except not. But that's kind of cool, though. Does Picky Pack get anything? Keen Eye and Skill Link. Skill Link makes it some multi-hit moves. I uh, always hit five times, so that's kind of good. But yeah, it's a normal type from the first route. It's It fills that role and not much else. Um... There's been a couple of those that have been decent, but yeah, I'm going to be skipping over it. A couple blank spots for totem gumshoes. Then we have Grubbin, which is a kind of unremarkable larva. And charge a bug, which is the greatest thing ever because it's a bus. It's supposed to be a 9-volt battery, but look at this thing. It's a bus. It is the best thing. I love this thing so much. Um... And then it becomes Vika Volt, which is uh, pretty badass looking. It's a it's a Cheerios bug. A couple people might get that reference, but uh, interesting shiny. I like Vika Volt. Um, actually, I kind of like Charge a Bug better because it's so dumb. I have to find out if this thing is going to be on the Metapod level of usability or like the. Um, Swadloon Whirlipede level because if it's not horrible I might actually use this thing with an Eviolite. Does this thing... Yeah, it gains the electric type after becoming Charger Bug so it, it, I won't be giving up on that. Um, actually, it looks like it has a unique ability too. What is this? Battery increases the power of allies special move, so double battle only. Okay. Vika Volt gets Levitate which makes sense. But yeah, I like this line. It's uh, one of the better early route bug types that have been introduced. I just, charge a bug is so funny to me because it's just a rectangle that looks like a bus and it's so stupid and it has the stupidest name. Like, how can you not love this thing? So anyway, next up we have crab roll. Ah, crab roller. It's a little mech, but a crab. And in a shocking move, um... Game Freak finally decided to make a crab Pokemon that isn't a water type. Um, I guess they did it with uh, Dwebble also, but this is not water, and it's also not bug. So, it's just pure fighting. It gets Hyper Cutter, Iron Fist, apparently. It's okay for what it is. I, mm, I might use it because of its evolution. So here's the regular, uh, here's the shiny one. Here's the evolution. Um... Bit of backstory for this one. In the Chinese leak, that turned out to be correct um, about pretty much everything. I don't know if it got anything wrong. Um, they said there was going to be a snowman Pokemon, and uh, that is this. Uh, they said that because apparently the Chinese characters for... Uh, or I guess just one character, I don't know what, what it is. Uh, the Chinese character for snowman can also be interpreted as Yeti. It can be either way. And this thing is a Yeti crab. So they called this thing a Yeti, and when it was translated, it uh, when it was translated, the person thought they said snowman, and so that's what they wrote. So that's that's where this thing came from. Um, probably going to be ice fighting, which from the top of my head, I don't think there's an ice fighting type yet. And um, it might also use the ice stone that is probably going to exist, so... It's kind of cool. I might give this one a shot. Uh, then we have Oracorio, 
which is one of many gimmicky Pokemon in this generation, and I actually kind of want to make a point to use most of the gimmicky ones, because I think actually most of them are pretty cool. So, uh, this is the Bale, Bail, it's not Ballet, Bail, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, but that's, that's this style, um, it is Fire Flying, and it can change, oh, here's Shiny again, um, changes into Pom Pom style, which is a cheerleader, and Pau style, which is a hula dancer, and Sensu style, which is some kind of Japanese dance, I'm not sure what it is, but, uh, Apparently this one changes by drinking uh, nectar from the different islands, so I think if you take it from island to island, it won't necessarily change automatically. You probably have to interact with something in the overworld. Um, but it goes from being fire to electric to psychic to ghost. And um, I don't know what this thing's stats are going to be like. It could be complete crap, but I want to kind of give it a shot. I think it's an interesting gimmick. So, that's that thing. Uh, here's Cutie Fly, which is a bug fairy. It's uh, what its name sounds like. It is, it's just a flying thing, and it is cute. Um, I fully expected this thing to not evolve when it was first uh, revealed, but it has an evolution, Rabambi, which is a really weird name. Um, does this thing get a special ability of any kind? Let me see. Honey Gather, Shield Dust, so no, not really. Uh, not sure if I'll go with this one or not. If I'm going with any bug, uh, Charge a Bug or Vika Volt's probably going to get that roll, and another one coming up later. I don't hate this one by any means. I think it's decent enough, but I might have to pass over it just because of team space. Like, I'm fully planning on doing the team of 12 like I usually do, and even then, I always have a hard time fitting everything in that I want. So here's Rockruff. It is a doge, and it is a rock type, even though it doesn't really look like one. That's pretty much all you need to know about it. Um, Kenai, Vital Spirit, so yeah, nothing terribly outlandish. And it evolves into uh, Lycan Rock, which has either this form if you're playing Sun, or this form if you're playing Moon. Um, I think they're both pure rock, even though this one looks like Rock Dark. Yeah, they're both just pure rock. Um, this thing I'm not the biggest fan of. It reminds me too much of uh, the like Sonic the Werehog thing. It's a little bit too over the top, I feel. And this one's a little bit boring, but I like it better of the two. It also still doesn't look... Neither of these look like rock types. Like I, I'm sorry, they just don't. Like, I could perfectly see this as just normal, normal, dark, or normal dark. Like, I'm kind of surprised that's not what they are. But, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about these. I'm probably not going to use it. It's okay, but it's not the best. Uh, here's Wishy Washy, another gimmick Pokemon, um, which means that I'm probably going to end up using it. Because uh, this is the single form, and apparently... Like, it's unclear how this works, but uh, it becomes this thing, not as an evolution, but just as a form change that triggers in battle, I guess. Let me see if this is explained at all. It's It was never really made that clear, because, yeah, this is the school form. Its ability is schooling. It says... Where is it? Alters the Pokemon form in battle. If health drops below a certain level, the form reverts. So I think that means that it starts out as the school form, and then if it takes too much damage, it goes back to being solo. But I also seem to remember there being something saying that uh, it doesn't gain this ability until it's a high enough level. So that's kind of weird. I don't know if that's true, though. Also, it's pure water, so it's not the most interesting type, but uh, I'll get back to that later. Uh, this thing. This does not have a name yet. It's a spiny thing of some description, and it evolves into a different spiny thing of some other description. I'm going to be honest, I don't know what this thing is. It's kind of like a sea anemone or coral 
thing. This looks more like a grass hut. Honestly, I don't know. And as far as type goes, I could be I could see it being any combination of grass, water, and poison. And possibly something else, but those are the most likely. So it's hard for me to say what I think about it until I know more about it, because I don't even know what the hell it's based on. It just looks weird to me. I don't hate it. It's kind of cool, but it's just weird. Um, if it is part poison, I might end up having to make space for it on my team, because I don't think there's any other poison types this gen that I like. But uh, moving on, here's Mud Bray. It's a donkey. Here's Mud's Dale. It's a Clyde's Dale. That's pretty much all you can say about these two. They are a donkey and a horse, respectively, and they are ground type. Um, own tempo and stamina. What does stamina do? It is increases defense by one when it's hit by an attack. Okay. So they're probably kind of tanky. This thing is also uh, over 2,000 pounds, which is really weird. It really should not be that heavy. Or more accurately, other Pokemon should be closer to this thing's weight, but they aren't. But uh, that's all I have to say about it. It's it's okay. It just doesn't really interest me that much. Uh, here's another new Pokemon, which nobody knows anything about, and it's evolution. So as far as I can tell, these are based off of a uh, bubble spider. I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but there's basically a type of spider that can like take bubbles of air down with it into the water. And that's what this thing is. So I can't see this thing as being anything other than a water bug type. Um, which is cool, because water bug is a interesting combination, and uh, the only thing prior to this was uh, Surskit, which sucks, and loses its type after it evolves. Problem with that, there's another bug water coming up that we already know about, and um, they really didn't need to make two of them. They did the same thing in Gen 6 with uh, Pumpkaboo and... What the hell is its name? Uh, Phantom, both being Grass Ghost, which, cool type combo, didn't need to make two of them. So, I'm going to have to decide if I want to use, um, like, I'm already going to be using the Water Starter, and then I kind of want to use Charge Bug. So I've got my Water, I've got my Bug. Then there's two other Water Bug types, which are both cool and are both redundant, and that's not counting all the other water types. So it's like, it's going to be really hard for me to pick what to use, but uh, I'd rather have more cool things than not enough. I don't know. I can't really say anything more about them until we know about it, but they're interesting designs at least. Uh, so here's Fomantis and Lurantis, which has bacon legs. Um, they resemble bugs, but are not. They are pure grass. They are the reverse of the Orchid Mantis, which is a insect in real life that is a mantis that tries to look like an orchid, whereas this is a plant that tries to look like a bug, so it's kind of funky. Um, let's see, it gets Leaf Guard, which I think is an old ability. What does that do? Prevent status problems in weather. Okay. Um, I'm not opposed to this one, but... Uh, there's a lot of grass types this gen, and I don't think I'm going to be going with this one. Like, I've already got the f grass starter as my main one, and there's a couple others later on that I... There, there's a number of them that I like. I, I'll probably pick a second one somewhere. I don't know if it'll be this one. Um, blank space, because it's probably a totem. Uh, here's another grass, Morlul. And uh, this one is part fairy, which makes it slightly more interesting. Evolves into this thing, which we don't have a name for. And um, if you haven't heard this from anyone else, I'm going to be the one to ruin this Pokemon for you forever. Um, according to this sprite, it is a white mushroom person that is actively receiving head from a Jigglypuff. Um, it's really unfortunate looking but no it's 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 one of those like the green version uh hitmonchan sprite being a 
Togekiss peeking behind a book, bush watching a Doduo taking a crap. It's just one of those weird, like, poor positioning type things. But yeah, it's a mushroom. They've introduced a mushroom Pokemon in every odd-numbered generation. They all learn Spore. This one is probably the least interesting, but it at least has a semi-unique typing. Uh, Whimsicott already has it, but I mean, it's whatever. So, uh, you could go either way. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. Uh, here's Solandit, which, uh, when I said earlier that there aren't any poison types in this generation that I really like, a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, you probably forgot about Solandit. No, I didn't. I really don't like this thing that much. Um, it has an evolution here. And the thing is, like, I don't know why I don't like this thing. I just kind of don't. It's a fire poison type, which is a cool type combo, which I've been wanting for a few generations. And there's nothing really wrong with its design either. It just, something about it doesn't sit with me. I don't like the face that it's making. And, um, its dex entry says that it emits pheromones that attract, like, males of all species, including humans. Which is really kind of creepy, and I don't know why it does that. Um, well, the female does anyway. And, uh, then this one, some people are, uh, expecting to be a, like, a female-only evolution. So, I mean, I guess we'll see what happens with that. It might it might be, it might not be, it's hard to say. Um, oh, and it has a unique ability, Corrosion. It allows it to uh, hit steel types with poison moves. Either that or it lets them poison them, I forget which it is. So, yeah, it's a solid enough Pokemon, it's just not for me, I think. Uh, here's Stuffle. It's a normal fighting thing. It has a tush tag like a Beanie Baby. It's kind of weird. It evolves into Beware, which is also kind of derpy looking, but I honestly kind of like this one. Might not find its way onto my team, especially if I'm going to be using Crab Brawler, but uh, I don't hate it. It's just, it's a thing that exists. And um, every time I see this thing, this thing or its pre-evolution, I am always reminded of the... Uh, strawberry flavored frosted mini wheats because I was eating them when I watched its reveal trailer. So it's just, it's perpetually going to be that for me now and it will never go away. Uh, so here's Bounce Sweet. It is a mango stain wearing a diaper. It is basically the same exact concept as, let me think, Petalil, Cheruby, Sunkern, C dot to a certain extent. Like it's it's a first it's a first stage fruit thing. It's not all that impressive. Um, and it's pure grass. Evolves into Steeny, which if I had not used the name Steiny in a previous play playthrough, I would totally use it for this. Um, where it basically is a Lilligant version 2.0 which in itself was Bell Awesome version 2.0. And this evolves into uh, Tsarina, which is Lilligant, but more so. So, there's been a uh, trend of there being very feminine-looking grass types in most generations now, and this is definitely the uh, one that fulfills that. Except if we go back a bit, we already had Lurantis, which is also kind of like that, so I don't know why they're doubling up. When I said there were a lot of grass types this generation, I wasn't kidding. Um, I feel like there's a ton of them. There's really not that many, but there's a lot. Uh, this one... Does this one have anything unique about it? Let me see. It's probably just a... I'm guessing it's a special attacker. It's Leaf Guard. Queenly Majesty. What does that do? Oh, that, that makes it so you can't get hit with priority moves, right? Yeah. No priority moves against it, so that's kind of neat, I guess. It's not the only Pokemon in this generation to get that either. <clears throat> so yeah, if you want to use this, that's fine. I used Lilligant, and I liked it. 
I like Bell Awesome. I like Cherim. I don't hate this thing. I just don't really want to use it because I've used all those other ones. Um, also, it has a move called Trop Kick, which is hilarious. So that's that thing. Here's Comfey. Hey, look, it's another grass type. Nope, this one's pure fairy. It looks like it should be grass, but it isn't. Same story as um, Flabebe. So, probably going to pass on this one. Um, it gets Flower Veil, which prevents lowering of ally grass type stats. Okay, that's boring. And Triage, which is... Or Triage, I'm not sure how you say that. Makes restorative moves gain the highest priority. Okay, so if it uses, like, Recover or Synthesis, it'll always go first. So that's kind of cool. Not going to use it, but it's okay. And uh, there it is. Okay. So here's Oranguru. And its counterpart, Pass Simeon. Um, I have to point out Pass Simeon here as being another thing from the Chinese leak. Um, they said there was going to be a rugby monkey. And everybody's like, that's kind of a weird decision, like a weird concept for a thing. I'm curious to see what that is. And it was basically the make or break point for the leak. Like, if anything that comes out resembles a rugby monkey, we know this leak is real. Because who would ever guess that? So then they announced this thing. And suddenly, all these people pop out of the woodwork. It's a lemur, it's not a monkey, and that's not a rugby ball. It doesn't count. Like, really, people? Come on. But, uh, anyway, both of these have a gimmick. I'm trying to remember what they are. Um, and they're also exclusives. This one is in moon, and then pass him in as in sun. Uh, this one... Telepathy. I think that means it... Does it teach moves to other Pokemon? How does that work? Oh, wait, no. Telepathy is a thing that already exists. Instruct, that's what it is. It's not, a, it's not an ability, it's a move. Um, what does it do? They showed it off in the trailer. I forget what Instruct does. It's... Okay, no, I remember now. Instead of you using a move... You use Instruct, and then that makes the other Pokemon attack twice, basically, if you're in a double battle. So they'll attack, you use Instruct to tell them to attack again. So, that's kind of funky. Um, and then Pass Simeon is... I think it, yeah, it gains the ability of the Pokemon that faints before it. I don't know if it has to be in a double battle. But, uh... This one is Fighting Type. This one is Normal Psychic. I did not know that without having to look it up, so okay. Um, I don't know if I'll use either of these. If Receiver can be used in single battles, I might give it a shot. I haven't uh, actually decided yet if I want Sun or Moon, but I can trade for the version exclusive if I don't get the version with it, so that's fine. So here's Wimpod. Um, I said earlier that there's bug water type uh, besides the bubble spider, and that is this. Um, Wimpod, let me remind myself what its ability does. I think it switches out if its HP gets below half. Let me see. Wimp out. When, yeah, when its HP drops below half, it will run away or swap out. So it's basically a free switch. Um, which means if you want it to be tanking against something, then you can't because it's just going to switch away, but that's probably not what it's ever meant to do. Um, also means if you ever find a shiny one in the wild, have fun, because um, you won't really be able to weaken it. So, um, interesting idea. And then it evolves into this beast, which is a... Uh, I think it's called a giant isopod. It's very creepy looking. I'm hoping it stays bug water. If it doesn't, then almost certainly the bubble spider will. So, I mean, we'll at least have one bug water type this generation. But uh, this thing is cool. I kind of expect this and the bubble spider to be version exclusives, but they didn't do it with um, Pumpkaboo and... I never remember that thing's name. You know, the Phantomp. Um, they didn't do it with those two, and
and these things are not next to each other in the decks by any means either. So, yeah, that's actually quite a gap. So, I don't know. They probably won't do that. It's weird. They haven't shown, like, any version exclusives other than the monkeys and the uh, lichen rock forms. Which, actually, I didn't comment on that either. I don't get why rock rough evolves into different stuff depending on version. It really should just be day versus night. So, one theory is that, like, it depends on the presence of the version legendary. Like, if you're in Sun, but you have a Lunala on your team, then it'll become the Midnight form anyway. I kind of hope that's the case, because it's really weird if it isn't. Um, and in later gens, they'll probably retcon it, so it's a day or night evolution, because that would be really weird otherwise. But that's a different subject. Um, anyway, Wimpod's evolution. It probably won't have the same ability. Uh, people are calling this thing Champod. That's not its official name yet, but... Uh, I could see it being the case. It doesn't look like the kind of thing that's going to wimp out, so it's probably going to get a different ability. No idea what, though. So here's uh, Sandy Ghast. It's a ground ghost type, and it is a sand castle, and it's amazing. And it evolves into Palisand. And both of these have uh, shinies that are black sand, which is a thing on Volcanic Island, so that's pretty fitting. Like every other object-based Pokemon, a lot of people hate on these, but some people think they're cool. I think they're cool, I'm probably going to use it. Um, does it really make sense for there to be a uh, creature that could potentially exist in a real-life setting that is just a ghost that always decides to become a sandcastle? Not really. I don't care. Like... It makes about as much sense as Phantom. Like, whatever. It, it's it's a Pokemon. It's it's stupid, and therefore it's cool. Um, and these get an ability that make it so it's... Uh, I don't remember if it's just its defense. Let me see, actually. Increases, yeah, physical defense by two stages when hit by a water move. Not the most useful thing, but it can help depending on what it gets hit by, I guess. Don't know if there's much else I can say about these. They're sandcastles, and they are derpy, but fun. So here's Pukamuku. It's another pure water type. Um, now, this one does not really have as much of a gimmick. It has the ability innards out, inflicts damage on the opponent if the Pokemon faints. So it's basically Aftermath, except I think it does more damage than that. If I remember, innards out is however much health you had left before the move KOs you is how much damage you do to them. So it's it's a cool ability, but it only kicks in if it if it faints, so that means that it by itself isn't that useful. It has to kind of die to be useful. Um, and since there's a lot of other water types this gen, I'm uh, probably going to give this one a pass. Now, um, can we move on here? I like the green one. Here's Type Null. Here's a fun one. Okay, so... Type Null, with a colon in there, is by itself just a really weird name in general, but it is for a weird Pokemon. Um, pure Normal, and its ability is like Battle Armor or something. Like, not anything terribly impressive, if I remember. Let me see. Yeah, it's Battle Armor. Um, so, this is a man-made chimera type thing that is uh well i'll go to the next pokemon first so this is Silvalley or Silvali. i don't know how you say that um i don't know why it goes from having a weird name to a somewhat regular one but the thing that makes the most sense is that uh it's created as this man-made construct thing and then basically if you give it enough, like, friendship and affection or whatever, then it evolves into kind of its own its own being, and that's why it has a unique name. Um, it's not confirmed that it's a friendship evolution, but that would make the most sense, I think. And um, Silvelli is... Uh, it's basically Arceus, but not a legendary, and probably not anywhere near as strong. It can be any type, and if Game Freak wanted to uh, 
cut down on the number of items that you have to collect. They could have made it use the plates like RCS does, or they could have made it use like the type boosting items like the uh, Miracle Seed, Mystic Water, that kind of stuff. But no, they didn't. They made it its own unique items. So have fun collecting those. Um, and an interesting pun with this one is its uh, ability RKS system, uh, which is what allows it to change type. Um, Arceus is how you're probably supposed to pronounce RCS. So you have Arceus, S R K S. That's totally what they were going for. Um, this one's going to definitely have some kind of significance to the plot. I'm almost certain of it. It's basically this creation that is supposed to either rival or like. Like, it's either supposed to mimic or, like, flat out try to be better than the Pokemon God. And I'm assuming it fails at that, but it was an attempt, and it is cool. I'm interested to see where that thing goes. And I'm most certainly going to use it. So here's Minior. Minior? Min I don't know. Minior, I'm going to call it. Uh, there's, like, 18,000 different sprites of the same thing of this one. Um... Because this is what it looks like with its shell, and when it gets hit, it uh, becomes this, and here's the shiny, or this, and here's the shiny, or this, and all the shinies are all the same. But yeah, there's seven colors of it, um, and that's pretty much it. It's a rock flying type. Um, I assume it's only part flying because they wanted to give it levitate, but they couldn't because it had its own unique ability. So they just threw flying onto it. I don't think there's been another levitating thing that was part flying since, like, Mantine. Like, everything else always gets levitate. Um, which, actually, that makes sense, because Mantine was before abilities were introduced. But anyway, uh, shields down, protects from status conditions, and has high defense until it hits 50% where it causes a Pokemon to change form. So, okay. Um, quick question, actually. Just... Not anything that I want somebody to answer, but just something to think about. Uh, going back to Sil Valley, this thing changes type because of its ability. You give it the item, and the ability is like, oh, hey, it's holding this item, so it changes. And same thing happens with Arceus. Now, um, why is it that they work like that, and other stuff, like Giratina hold an item and they change regardless of their ability like I don't get that why why did they make an ability specifically for form changes when that doesn't seem to be mandatory when it can just be kind of like intrinsic to the Pokemon itself is it just because they didn't want to give it a different ability they figured that Arceus was powerful enough on its own so have it have an ability that does nothing like I don't know it's just weird um, this one's not exactly the same case, but it could be a pure rock type with Levitate that just happens to change form when it gets to half health. But that's a little bit different. That's like Zen mode Darmanitan, I guess. So yeah, that's an ability thing. I don't know, I'm just overthinking it. Here's Komala. Um, Komala is hilarious because its shiny is not a different color at all. It just has a different colored log which just looks like a pillow. I think that's the best thing ever. Um, so everybody was expecting Komala to evolve. It doesn't. It's just kind of a average-looking normal type that probably won't really do anything great. So, uh, honestly, I would be willing to give this thing a try purely because I feel bad for it, but I don't think I'm actually going to. Um, ability comatose means that the only status condition it can ever have is sleep. So I guess that's kind of cool, but yeah, I'm going to pass on that. Here's Turdinator. It's Dragon Fire for some reason. I actually forgot this thing existed, to be honest, because I was thinking... Um, like, I don't go out of my way specifically to double up on types, but since I'm going to be using all three starters and um, I'm going to have another grass and another water on there somewhere, I kept thinking, 
I should have another fire on there somewhere so I can kind of have like the B team. But I didn't want to use Salandit. I might actually use this then. Um, I don't love its appearance. I think it's kind of weird, but I go for weird Pokemon sometimes, so I don't know. Why not? Um, shell armor, that's a regular ability, right? Yeah, no critical hits, so okay. It doesn't do anything terribly impressive, I guess, but it gets a lot of... Uh, oh, that's what it is, Shell Trap. It gets a move that... Uh, I don't remember what Shell Trap does. It was in one of the trailers. It was something about, like, explosive moves. I think it's, like, maybe a Protect that does damage, kind of like Spiky Shield. I could be completely wrong about that. Whatever, that's Turdinator. Which, uh, when it was first put up on Cerebi, it was spelled as Torchinator, and I'm like, holy shit, they're naming a Pokemon after Torture. That's, like, kind of out there, but then I was wrong. Here's Toge tomorrow. It's it's the Pika clone of the generation. It's part steel for some reason. I don't really get why. And um, it has iron barbs, which is kind of cool. But uh, probably not going to use it. Not going to lie. And here's Mimikyu, the other Pika clone of the generation, but it doesn't really quite count as one. It's, like, almost a Pika clone, but in a different way. Uh, Ghost Fairy, so it gets a number of immunities. And it has a funky ability where when it gets hit, uh, the first hit, no matter what, basically just makes it fall over, and that's it. It doesn't take damage or anything. So, um... I think this is kind of the breakout star of Gen 7. Everybody seems to love this thing. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's a cool concept. Um, I don't necessarily like the fact that it's, like, super obviously a Pikachu and nothing else. I kind of wish it had disguises for other Pokemon, but um, it doesn't, unfortunately. And so, what it is is kind of fun. It's 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 cool. I I'm probably gonna give it a chance, actually. And then there's four blank spaces, which are presumably for Mimikyu, regular, shiny, fallen over, fallen over, shiny. That's it. Here's Bruxish. It's a very bright fish, and it is scary looking. That's all I have to say about it. No. Uh, it's another pure water. Um, if there weren't so many other pure waters in the generation that are probably better, I would use this, but I, since there are, I probably won't. Um, actually, never mind. It's not pure water. I'm wrong. It's water psychic. That actually might lift it up a notch. Not necessarily enough to put it over uh, wishy-washy, but I don't know. I'll think about it at least. Um... Yeah, see, that's the problem. This gen has so many water types. You've got the starter. You've got Wishiwashi. You've got Pukamuku. you got this thing. You've got Wimpod, which probably stays part water when it evolves. Not a given, but probably. And then you've got the Bubble Spider, which is also probably part water. And there's another one later on, which is also probably part water, and I'll get to that one in a minute. Which... It's okay, like, it's an island area, so there's going to be a lot of water types, but there's only 81 new things in this gen, and with so many of them being water and grass, I feel like they're just kind of doubling up on stuff, and, like, I'd like to see more ice, more, uh, ground maybe, I think, uh, Mudsdale's the only one, there might be another one I'm forgetting, but yeah, it's like, I mean... There aren't any types they've outright ignored, except for maybe Poison. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll stop rambling about that, I guess. But yeah, Bruxish, Water Psychic, apparently. Um, one of its abilities is the same thing as uh, Tsarina's. It just prevents priority moves from working. It also gets Strong Jaw, which is what uh, Tyrant had. Just powers up biting moves. So, it's ugly as all hell, but it's supposed to be that way. That's kind of interesting, I guess. Here's Drampa. Um, it's a normal dragon. It doesn't have an evolution or prevo. 
it's just kind of a standalone thing, which is kind of what I expected. Uh, Berserk, what does that do? Increase the special attack when HP reaches 50. Okay. I can consider this one. Might go with Turdinator over it if I'm going with a dragon, but uh, it's kind of cool in its own way. Um, a lot of people compare it to the thing from uh, NeverEnding Story, but, I mean, whatever. I like how its eyebrows become black in the shiny form. So here's the other one that's probably part water. Um, nobody's really sure what to make of this thing. It's an anchor, and it's probably some combination of either water, steel, or ghost. Um, water, because it's an anchor, it's going to be underwater. Steel, because it's an anchor, it's made of steel. And ghost, because it is probably one of those, like, object-possessed-by-a-ghost type things. Um... I've also seen arguments for grass, because it's covered in, like, seaweed, and possibly poison, although I'm not really sure where that's coming from, necessarily. Um, this thing's weird. I kind of like it, but I need to know more about it before I can make an opinion on it one way or the other. Um, it doesn't really have much of a face. Like, I think the compass is supposed to be an eye, but... It's, it's just weird. It's like soul rock. It doesn't really resemble anything. I don't know. Depending on what type this is, I very well could give it a shot, but uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, here's jangmo o which evolves into hakamo o I think. Is that how that thing is? hakamo o Scroll down and find it. Yeah, Hakamo O and then Komo O. Kamo O. I think this one's supposed to be like a Komodo dragon, so that's why. Um, I don't actually care for these that much. They're dragon fighting, which is. Well, this one's dragon. Its evolutions are dragon fighting. Right, I think. Yeah. Um, they get bulletproof or soundproof as their ability. So, once again, sound moves should be a type, but they're not. And, uh, I couldn't tell you why I don't like these. There's nothing wrong with them. I just don't really like them. <laughs> I, I feel like this one's a bit over-designed, and I hate to throw that term out there because there's a lot of stuff in later gens that, always, that people complain about as being over-designed, and I don't think that's a problem most of the time. But, uh, eh. I don't know. I'm just, I think I'm going to pass. And they're also the uh, pseudo-legendary of the generation, almost certainly. Like, there's nothing else that really could be, so... I usually don't use pseudo-legends. Pseudo I did on a couple occasions, but not that often. Whatever. They're fine. I just don't want to use them. And uh, here's spots for totems. Now, that is the end of the uh, normal Pokemon, quote-unquote. Um, I would argue that Sil Valley is not normal either, but whatever. And uh, now we start getting into some weird stuff. So first we have the totems. Here's Tapu Koko, which is Electric Fairy. And the other three. I'm going to guess that they're all part fairy. This one's probably Psychic. This one's Fighting, maybe. And this one's like Ghost or Dark, Poison, Water. I don't know what the hell this thing is. Um, but yeah, the other three don't have names yet. These are the four island deities, and, um, it's not clear yet if that means they're legendaries or not. They're, I think you have to fight them in the, uh, island challenges, but you probably can't catch them the first time around. I don't know. Like, I mean, nobody really knows yet, so I, I, my personal theory is that you fight them, and then in the post-game you can go back to the islands and try to catch them. Um, I kind of see these as being the, like the legendary trio of the gen, even though there's four of them, so it's not a trio. Um, but they might not be legends either. They might just be standalone things that are like maybe high base stats, but not quite legendary status. I guess we'll find out when we know if they can breed or not. 
Um, which, speaking of that, actually... Anybody have any ideas what these are? Also, good, good shiny there. I like that one. So, let me actually skip ahead in the Pokedex a bit. So we've got the normal Pokemon, the island deities, whatever the hell these things are, and then the version mascots. So, there's quite a few theories going around. Um, these are possibly pre-evolutions of them, or possibly like a Carbink versus Diancy type relationship. Um, I've also seen the possibility that this evolves into this, which then is a split evolution into either this or this, depending on which version, or like whatever things you are like whatever requirements you met or something. Um, I really have no clue. When I first saw them, I basically thought that they were kind of like the uh, like the inert versions of them. Like I, I figured this was the uh, this was for Lunala, this was for Solgaleo, and like if it's nighttime, Solgaleo turns into this. If it's day, Lunala turns into this. Um, but they're actually different dex entries from what I'm getting. So they're not form changes. They are actually different Pokemon. And the order that they come in is Puffy Cloud thing, Weird Shell thing, Sun Legendary, Moon Legendary. So if it is an evolution type situation, then that means that they broke the tradition of evolutions always being in a certain order because like unless it goes this into this into the final form then that means like if this is the baby of Lunala it's completely out of order in the decks and I don't know if it necessarily is like this one it's got like this armor all over it and I could kind of see it going either way but same thing for this one. Like, I don't know what the fuck these are. They're weird. That's just all they are. They're really weird. If it is, like... I don't know. <laughs> and it could be a Fion type thing, too, where it's like a baby legendary that doesn't evolve into the legendary. But it's just, it's so bizarre. I There's so many different things they could be. I'm willing to guess that any one of those could be true, or it could be something else that I'm not thinking of. And apparently, according to, uh, I think, Polygon.com, um, the character Lily has one of these. So make of that what you will. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, like I said, I don't know what to make of these two. The main legendaries, I honestly don't give that much of a shit about either way. Um, everybody's already pointed out that... Uh, this thing being the embodiment of the sun is weak to fire because it's psychic steel and this thing being the embodiment of the moon is weak to dark because it's a psychic ghost which is kind of dumb but I mean whatever um, I never use the legendaries I'm not going to use these two their designs are pretty cool I guess I like this one better but uh, yeah I usually don't care that much about legendaries. Um, so, if I said before that we reached the end of the normal Pokemon, I'm going to say that again, because now we start getting into some really weird shit. Um, these are the Ultra Beasts. We already know of this one, which is UB01. This one is UB02 Absorption and UB02 Beauty. Um... It's been stated that these are not really Pokemon in the normal sense. And their designs kind of reflect that because they're pretty out there. Um, but the fact that they're in the Pokedex indicates that you probably can catch them. And the data mining is also showing that uh, there's a new type of ball. And it's theorized that it'll be able to catch these things. Um, as for what types these are, if they even have types in the normal sense, I have no idea. They very well could be, 
like just something completely unknown but I don't know what to think about them but uh, those are only the first three now we have uh, after that this dude which uh, is a bunch of wires tied together with spindly fan hands and it has three legs uh, this thing is a large robe that kind of looks like Impa from Skyward Sword with two floating arms made of bamboo. This thing is an origami fan type thing. This is some giant monstrosity with crab claws coming out of it and a hole in the back of its body with a giant mouth in its body. And uh, this is actually probably the most reasonable of them, and it's just kind of like this thing made of, like, obsidian or just some kind of crystal. They're really weird. Um, they're obviously meant to be because they're, like, extra-dimensional. So, they're... Uh, <laughs> There's also a theory going around that these are based on certain NPCs. Like, I think this one's Lily. This one is, I think, the... Uh, I don't actually remember any of the NPCs' names because I usually don't don't pay attention to them. Um, I think this one is the Team Skull leader. This one, I forget who that is. There's a guy that looks like this. I don't remember. There's a picture going... I think this is actually like one of the island captains. But, um, yeah, there's a theory going on that. I haven't read much up on it. I just know that it exists. Um, the other thing I want to point out about these is when I said earlier there were 81 new Pokemon coming to a total of 802, that's assuming that, first of all, Ultra Beasts are catchable and that they're not just some weird anomaly of the Pokedex, and also assuming that uh, despite this and this both being called UB02, that they are in fact separate things, um, because if they are form changes... That means that despite them looking nothing like each other, they're the same entry. And therefore, any of these other things could also be related, even though they look nothing alike. So I'm just going to assume that these are eight different things, and that they're eight different dex entries. We will eventually find out if that's true. So getting up on the end here, here's Magirna. It does not appear to have a shiny. Um... Steel Fairy on this thing, right? Let me look that up. Uh, yeah, Steel Fairy. Soul Heart, which is... Raises the special attack by one stage when a Pokemon on the field is knocked out. So, once again, multi-battle type thing. Um, not the biggest fan of this one. Every gen for a while now has kind of had, like, the... I hate to say, like, the waifu mythical, but that's kind of what it is. Like, you had Meloetta, then you had Diancie, now you have this thing. Um, I think it's an interesting enough design, but, I mean, it's a mythical. I'm not going to use it. Um, I think it's being given out as a QR code as soon as the game comes out. And, um, anyway, I said it doesn't have a shiny, because this is one. This is the next one, when you look at the sprites. But then you have these. Um, I think this is actually a separate form of it, and then uh, this is the shiny of that form, so kind of weird, I guess. I think I like the original one the best. The Pokeball one's okay, but it's also a little garish, I guess. I don't know. Um, and that leaves us with one final thing, which is this. Um, here's the normal. Here's the shiny. If you don't see how they're different, look at the top of the head. It's very slightly different. Uh, this is the one that everybody calls Marshadow, because that was a nick that was a name that was registered along with the other legendaries a long time ago. Um, nothing's really known about it, but it's at the end of the deck, so it's probably a mythical. And um, everybody says that it has like a very unique typing. That's what the leaks say, I guess. I'm going to guess Ghost Normal, but now that we know that these are also Pokemon that defy type um, it could also follow the same format as those, I don't know so I've been talking for a really freaking long time 
Uh, last thing I want to go out on, since I'm looking at this thing, is uh, I would like to point out there are only two mythicals this generation, unless some of the Ultra Beasts also fall into that category. And given how Game Freak likes to handle this, they usually release one per year, and then as soon as the last one is given out, then the new generation starts. That is telling me that either Gen 7 is going to be really short, they're going to have to fill up events with other stupid shit, such as Pikachu with a hat, or um, the next games in Gen 7 after Sun and Moon are going to introduce a lot of new form changes as events, which is kind of lame, but I don't know. No point in theorizing, because that is probably a couple years off, so that is everything you ever wanted to know about my opinions, and much more, basically. It'll be out in a month, it'll be kind of cool. I don't know if I'll do any kind of videos on it, but I'm not ruling it out completely. Not going to do a full playthrough. And I'll shut up now. Thank you for watching two hours of me rambling.